In this video, we're going to look at how to do stoichiometric calculations. Now, when we first started talking about stoichiometry, we mentioned that the main goal of stoichiometry is to be able to measure how quantities change throughout a chemical reaction. So we've set up all of the foundational, uh, more, more or less all of the foundational knowledge that we need in order to start doing these types of calculations. So we really just want to start looking at examples of how to do that, how to be able to track if I start with this amount of a certain reaction how much of a certain product is going to be formed or if I form a certain amount of product how much of my reactant must I have started with in order to form that amount of product It's very powerful types of calculations that you can do starting from balanced chemical equations there's one more um, uh, topic that I want to introduce before we look at an example problem though and that's called the mole ratio so the mole ratio is just simply the ratio of the number of moles of one compound to another in a chemical equation, right? So right here we have the decomposition of water into hydrogen and oxygen, right? H2 and O2. And when we look at this, we notice that there is a two to one ratio between the water molecules and the produced oxygen. Right. So what that means is that for every two moles of water, you produce one mole of oxygen. Right. So the mole ratio would look like this. For every two moles of H2O, you will produce one mole of O2. Right. And these mole ratios are going to be crucial in order to do any of these types of stoichiometric calculations. What it allows you to do is, is to relate the uh, reactants to the products. Right. Again, once we're able to get everything on the same footing, right, the same footing of moles, then we can interchange between different compounds by using their mole to mole ratio, right? So for every, every two water molecules you get here, you'll produce one O2 molecule, right? So they have a two to one mole ratio. So in a, all stoichiometric calculations, you'll see uh, these mole ratios like this, and they'll be used in order to, to relate compounds that are in the same chemical equation. So this is, again, why you have to balance the chemical equation correctly. Starting with a balanced chemical equation, you'll get the right mole ratios. You got the right mole ratios, you can do these types of calculations. Okay, so let's look at an example of what we're talking about with a stoichiometric calculation. So this problem says phosphorus trichloride is produced from the reaction of solid phosphorus and chlorine gas, right? So we got solid phosphorus here, P4, chlorine gas, Cl2, those produce phosphorus trichloride. So uh, it asks you to do three things here. So the first thing it asks you to do is to balance the chemical equation. The second thing it asks, what mass of phosphorus trichloride can be prepared from 75 grams of phosphorus, right? These are the types of questions, really powerful questions that you can answer using stoichiometry. What is going to be the mass of my product that'll be produced if I start with this amount of my reactant, right? Uh, and the last thing is what mass of chlorine will be consumed in the reaction, right? So we can answer all three of these questions using our knowledge of stoichiometry. So the first part, part A, is balancing the equation. So we got P4 plus Cl2 yields PCl3, right? Our phosphorus trichloride, right? So we notice an imbalance, right? We have four phosphorus atoms here in the reactants, and we got one here in the products, right? Three chlorines in the products and two on the reactants, right? So we got two uh, things that we need to, to fix here uh, in an imbalance. So what I'm going to do is add a four in front of PCL3, right? And then that creates, that, that solves the imbalance with phosphorus, but it creates an imbalance with chlorine, right? But we have this Cl2, like I mentioned in the last one, when you got a, a you know, uh, element all by its lonesome right here. It makes it really easy to actually balance, right? So we got 12 chlorines on this side with this four times three. So that means all we got to do here is just put a six in front of this guy. That gives us 12 chlorines on both sides. Now we got four, uh, we have four phosphorus uh, atoms on each side 
and we got 12 chlorine atoms on each side. So we're good. We're balanced. Okay, so that solves part A. So part A is done. Now, part B is where we get into the real heavy lifting stoichiometric calculations, right? So part B is asking what mass of phosphorus trichloride can be prepared from 75 grams of phosphorus. So anytime you're asked these questions, you want to, in order to compare two compounds in the same chemical equation, everything has to be in moles. Right. So if, if you're stuck on where to start, if you don't know how to continue, right, all you the main thing you want to do first is get everything in moles because, you know, that's going to be the equal footing where you can compare all of these different uh, chemical compounds. Right. So so what we want to do first is to um, find out how many moles are in 75 grams of of P4. Right. So we got 75 grams of P4, right? Now, the atomic mass for phosphorus is going to be 30.97 grams per mole. If you multiply that by four, the molar mass for P4 is going to be equal to 123.88 grams per mole. Right, so we have the molar mass for P4. So now we have everything we need in order to ter turn this 75 grams into moles, right? So let's do that. So we got for every one mole of P4, we know we'll have 123.88 grams of P4. So that means in a 75 gram sample of P4, we have 0 0.61 moles of P4, right? So that's how many moles of, of phosphorus trichloride, or, or phosphorus, excuse me, so that's how many moles of phosphorus we're starting with, right? We have 0 0.61 moles of phosphorus. So now we wanna ask ourselves the question, okay, if we start with this amount of moles of P4, how many moles of phosphorus trichloride will we produce starting with this amount of P4. That's where the mole ratio is gonna come into play. So we wanna use the mole ratio, right, to, to see how many moles of phosphorus trichloride we would actually produce. So we start with the 0.61 moles of P4. And then we look at our balanced chemical equation, right? We know that for every one mole of P4, we're going to produce four moles of phosphorus trichloride. So you can use that mole ratio as a conversion factor. You're basically going to be converting the amount of P4 to amount of PCl3. So we know that for every one mole of P4, we have four moles of PCl3. And so that's going to give us 2.44 moles of PCl3, our phosphorus trichloride, right? So that gives us the amount of moles of PCl3 that will be produced in, by this reaction, right? Now, as far as looking for, uh, now you wanna ask yourself, are you done with the question? And, and the answer is actually no, you're not done yet because keyword here, if they ask for mass, they're asking for something in grams. So it has to be a mass. Moles is not a mass. We're just counting atoms when we're talking about moles. Uh, if it asks you what mass, you have to take that amount of moles and convert it to a mass, right? So that means you're going to need the molar mass for PCL3. So the molar mass for PCL3 is going to be 137 0.32 grams per mole. And when you're doing these practice problems on your own, like you're doing your, your um, online questions or doing your homework questions or whatnot in class and whatnot, you know, you, you can Google these molecular masses all you want. I, I will make sure that you have good practice with being able to calculate these on your own, but you can always Google these guys to get the, the molar masses that you need to solve these questions. Okay, so um, so now all we have to do is take this number of moles and convert it to a mass to get a final answer for part B. 
So our 2.44 moles of PCL3, we use our molar mass to convert to grams. So for every one mole of PCL3, we have 137.32 grams of PCL3. And so that's going to leave us with a mass of 335.06 grams of PCL3. Now you're done. Right now we're done. We got a mass now. So now that now we're done. Right. So that was what it was asking for in part B. Now, I want you to take a moment and just appreciate what we were able to do here. Right. Just based off of the initial mass of phosphorus and our balanced chemical equation, we're able to predict how much phosphorus trichloride would be produced in this reaction. Now, there's a little bit more nuance to this. We'll talk about something called percent yield. So, you know, things don't always um, pan out to equal the amount that you calculate, but you're able to calculate basically the maximum amount of PCL3 that you could produce in this reaction just based off the initial amount of phosphorus you're starting with and a balanced chemical equation. So, so just kind of take a minute and just appreciate the power of what, what you're really able to do with stoichiometry. So now let's go to part C. So part C is asking you what mass of chlorine will be consumed in the reaction, right? So from this first part, right, we know that we um, are starting with this amount of P4, right? So what we wanna know, what we wanna do here is be able to calculate how much of the, the chlorine would be consumed producing this amount of PCL3, right? So, so we can start with what we know about P4, right? So we got our 0.61 moles of P4, right? And again, we can use the mole to mole ratio in order to convert P4, this amount of P4, to chlorine. So we know that there's a, a six to one ratio between the chlorine and the phosphorus. So we can use that, right? One For every one mole of P4, we will consume six moles of chlorine, right? So you, you kind of just got to get the language down here, right? So there's they're asking how much chlorine will be consumed. Well, we know that for every one mole of phosphorus, we're going to consume six moles of chlorine. So really it's just converting this amount that we're starting with of phosphorus to chlorine, right? Okay, so that means that for every for this amount of phosphorus, we're going to consume 3.66 moles of chlorine. Right? So we we know that we're consuming this amount in moles. Now the only thing left is just to convert it to grams, right? So again, you're going to need a molar mass, so you'll need the molar mass for Cl2. For CL2, the molar mass is 70.9 grams per mole. So we can use that guy here to convert this to a mass and get our final answer. So 3.66 moles of CL2. We use our molar mass, so we know that for every one mole of CL2, we have 70.9 grams of CL2. And so that gives you a final answer of 259.49 grams of CL2, right? So that's how much CL2 will be consumed uh, in this reaction, right? Or that's how much CL2 you need for this reaction to go, right? So, so we solved all three, right? First, just balancing the equation, then getting how much... Uh, uh, the mass of your product that will be produced. And then we just calculated the amount of the other reactant that would be consumed, right? So these stoichiometric calculations can get very involved. This is kind of the, the base level of what's involved here. Basically, you want to get very comfortable being able to go across this reaction arrow using the mole to mole ratio to be able to, to go across this reaction arrow, convert what you're starting with to what you're gonna finish, convert what you're starting with of one reactant to how much is consumed of another, right? Th this is just something that you're gonna have to get comfortable with. But really the, the crux here is these mole ratios, right? Just being able to spot and use these mole ratios 
from the balanced chemical equation, really that's half the battle. And then once you've kind of, once you got to get comfortable with that, these stoichiometric calculations tend to get a little bit easier.